Hey Ratbags, it's Jade here today with the 10 essential mods you need to get started, especially on console. I've double checked and these will be available on Xbox and PlayStation 5. And I think this is a good point to start from. No crazy mods here with creatures, no huge amount of cheaty resource gathering. These mods are gonna complement the brand new game. If you wanna experience Arc Ascended almost vanilla like with just a few quality of life features. For some players, that's really important. For others, I've got the perfect videos for you incoming. I'm gonna show you all the DLC mods that you can actually have enabled on the island, as well as the crazy creature mods that are available too. But this is definitely for beginners and players that really just want to have the Ark Survival Ascended experience with just a few nice little additions. So leave a like if you find it useful, go and check out all the mods right now. Like I said, they should be available for everyone now. PlayStation has got the chance to play Ark Ascended. And let's go, 10 essential mods without being too cheesy. Super Spyglass and Binoculars. This will give you best of both worlds. Unlocked at level 10, the Super Spyglass will give you much more details about a creature's health, possible levels, and a lot more of its stats. You then got the Super Binoculars, which give you even more nice details. Unlocked at level 30, these are obviously a lot quicker to get than the tech binoculars. So here's the regular spyglass. Yep, we can see a dino level and it's a bit flimsy. And now check out the super spyglass, giving you a proper UI at the bottom. That's easy to read once you still get a grip. You can now press a do believe RT on these though, and it will keep the little UI diagram on the bottom so you can check out more stats at your leisure. You can zoom in obviously just like you normally can and yeah, get yourself some more details. The super binoculars will do exactly what the tech binoculars can, but obviously unlocking it much earlier. Now you'll find many variants of some of these mods like the super spyglass, and there's also different variations of cryopods, but the super cryopod I really like as it's relatively simple to use. You'll be able to craft a pistol and this is what you can use to aim at your dinosaurs to go ahead and cryo them. Of course, cryopods are not in the game and they won't be until maybe Extinction gets added. This mod obviously comes with a cryo fridge as well and lots of bells and whistles about what you can do. There's also a settings that you can directly enable within the actual mod itself. Look inside the cryo fridge and you've got a bunch of different options where you can turn off cryo sickness, capture dinos in combat or gain XP while killing your creatures in the pods. You can adjust the time it takes to capture a creature, the cryo sickness time. So if you want to make it a bit harder even, or maybe a bit simpler and easier, go ahead. It's also apparently meant to generate eggs and poop, but I couldn't really get this to work. Maybe user error, or maybe just not really updated enough yet on console. But either way, I still think this is one of the better mods. So I tried a couple of the others out and they were a bit more fiddly. You also got even more options in the cryo terminal as it will collect fertilized eggs within an area around it and incubate them as well. Utilities Plus, simply put, it means that your items won't break anymore. Things like wooden spears, whips, and some of the other stuff like torches will now be pretty much everlasting. They're all pretty much unlocked at the same stage as their other items or close enough to it. No more running out of bowlers, you'll be able to have enough whenever you need them. Maybe a bit cheeky to some since it's not utilizing enough resources, but for the fact that they're so basic, I think this isn't such a bad idea. Especially when it comes to the grapple hooks, which can also be made in this mod, effectively giving you unlimited amounts. This mod does also come with its own tech binoculars, unlocked pretty much earlier, but I still prefer the Super Spyglass as you might not necessarily want to unlock or wait until then to be able to get hold of something with a bit more detail. The upgrade station, an essential piece of kit. There are some new pretenders on the throne, I'm not gonna lie, the upgrade station and imbuer is pretty good as well, but this one still deserves its flowers as it's been around for such a long time. Put items in, upgrade it, super simple, as long as you've got the resources to do so. Armor, weapons, you can go ahead and pretty much upgrade almost any kind of armor or weapon. Again, as long as you've got plenty of resources. It doesn't tell you exactly what resources you need sometimes, which is a bit of a shame. Early upgrades will pretty be much the stuff that you use to craft the item, but once they get to a certain level, they will start requiring more more resources that may be harder to get hold of. But it's super nice and simple. You can also go ahead and take or salvage weapons and armors and items to get raw resources. Also has a blueprint station as well, so you can craft lots of duplicate blueprints if you want to give them out to tribe mates. 
So yep, yeah, nice and super simple. The imbue and upgradation, like I said, definitely worth a shout out if you want to try and see what more enhancements you can get from it. So console fans have always wanted more additions from the S Plus mod. We had plenty of build improvements when the modder actually started working for Wildcard and introduced a bunch of stuff. But missing was some of these key mods that people wanted, like the Hatchery and Nanny. Now this isn't exactly the same mod, it's made by someone else, but it's pretty much the same thing. This will take care of your young dinosaurs and your eggs. You find it relatively easy in level one on the engrams, but you will need to make certain things like sweet veggie cake to go ahead and craft the hatchery. And the nanny will need giant honey also. So not exactly too cheaty as you will have to do quite a bit of work to get them items first. It does come also with some upgraded stations that will basically give you a little bit more space or make things last a bit longer. So again, not crafting stuff it shouldn't and not necessarily running without power, just a small little improvements for all of these crafting benches. But the main focus is the hatchery. Place it down and that's it. Pretty much put your eggs inside and you'll be having them taken care of. And with the nanny, you can choose how much food it's actually delivering or feeding. And it's got a radius for both of these items that you can expand on. So never have your starving dinosaurs die on you again when you've got the nanny and the hatchery. Building's going to feel really fresh and new, so you might not want to jump straight into having brand new build pieces or designs. Instead, I would go for something like this. This is the architect structures remastered, and it pretty much adds and gives some new build pieces, but not overwhelmingly so, and it's super simple to use. Unlocked at level 4, you get better green glass house structures, where the glass is actually almost opaque. But the best ones for me are the wooden glass walls and the metal and stone ones. These are really good too. Also comes with slope walls and a whole host more of improvements. And it's clearly marked out when you hover over them that they are the ASR version. Here's some of the stone glass walls. The glass is still a bit funky. I would like to see just a perfectly clear glass, but it's better than what we've currently got. Here's some of the stone glass walls. The glass is still a bit funky. I would like to see just a perfectly clear glass, but it's better than what we've currently got. And look at the difference between the vanilla green grass glass structures and the regular. It's so much nicer and better in my opinion. And yep, just lots of nice slope roofs, slope pieces, new ways to add and complement the brand new building system that is now in Arc. And they're all pretty much at the same level that you would find their normal counterparts. Don't need to show these off, they're pretty much self-explanatory. You can get silent structures, which is much needed for some of the later stuff that you'll find. This will just reduce the sound, nice and simple, and you don't have to do anything about it. Install it and it'll work. We all love our different colored dinosaurs and that's what the events normally give us. But what if you want more chances to get more colorful creatures? Any color sets adds a 30% chance of any of the creatures to spawn with any of the more varied colors that you can find. A small thing, it doesn't make it overpowered or flavored towards one event set of colors or another. It's gonna pretty much include all of them. You will have to do a dino wipe or make sure you go on a big killing spree if you want certain creatures to go ahead and have a chance to spawn, but you don't have to do anything with this mod. You simply just install it and that's it. It's done and dusted once you've killed or done destroy wild dinos. I know mutations and colors are important to players sometimes, so this should hopefully get you started up. There are various different stacking mods, but a word of warning, a lot of them will delete any resources or refined resources, especially that you've crafted and stacked if you go ahead and remove them. So once you've chosen one, don't remove it unless you're absolutely sure you've utilized all the resources. The TG series has three different mods that are stacking all various different levels, but you will need to go ahead and replace your crafting benches if you want it to stack properly the items inside it. You might have to do the same for some of the storage options as well so that it stacks properly. If you're not able to hold higher stacks, maybe try taking a mind wipe too. I'm going to do better at looking at some of the other stack mods for sure to see if any of them have the option not to delete when you remove and stack correctly whenever you load up the stacking mod itself. But all in all, they do much the same thing, reducing the weight by up to 90% and giving huge stacks, sometimes up to 10,000 per resource. A lot of players will value using this rather than messing around with modifiers themselves to give themselves more weight. And it does make everything just a bit simpler when you're trying to sort through your inventory. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna check out some of the others to see if there's any better ones added in the future. 
So no automatic crafting jade, where's auto arc? Well, it's kind of busted. I showed a video recently where I took a deep dive into it and some of the features just weren't working yet. The developer has said they will, but I do feel like some of the stuff that that comes with is just a bit too cheaty. Being able to pretty much generate resources for you while you do absolutely nothing is kind of against the antithesis of Ark, where you're meant to be using the dinosaurs to gather stuff. And I really wanted this first mods video to be how to complement Ark rather than replace it or make it simply too cheesy. That said, there is one mod I've left to the end because it's up to you. Maybe this is just a bit too cheaty. It is Death Inventory Keeper. Yes, as soon as you die, you'll respawn and you will have all of your items and armor on you. Honestly, debated about this, it's part of the game, right? Having to run back to your body and hopefully recover your goods eventually. But for many, it's a slog. It just takes too much time and the game's already punching enough with bugs and crashes that could affect this. Especially at the moment where there is a significant bug where sometimes bags that drop when you die are disappearing through the terrain or the map. So yeah, it just about makes it into my list. I know it might be a bit underwhelming for some. Where's all the creature mods? Where's all the great, fantastic other stuff you could add? Don't worry, that's all coming. Like I said, I've got many, many more videos taking a deeper look at some of the stuff that you need to know, which ones are best for gathering resources, what dino mods there are, lots and lots of more is incoming. But hopefully that's helped you get started. These are the 10 essentials that I think you need and I will be updating my list to add some more in the future. Let me know what mods you've already started to enjoy once you've played and I'll see you at bags for more guides in Arc Ascended soon. Bye-bye.